I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited to be bringing God's word to you today. Hey, I know we are running to the end of this year. And trust me, I've been telling you all week, a miracle is going to happen in your life this week. Praise God. You are not carrying any debt into next year. No, God is going to open a door of supply for you. Believe, believe and rest. Praise God. Now, before going to today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Join me in faith. Now, I'm releasing my faith. Jesus has released his faith. Praise God. All you need is to come in agreement with us. Now, he told me, let's do this. That means he's willing to back it up. And now the next part is you. Agree and say, I, I just believe. Praise God. Okay, so let's do it. Praise God. Say with me, say, Father. I demand today my daily bread. It's coming to me right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. Now, hey, whatever you need that in your classification will make this year end well, it's coming to you. Now, some of you might be helped. You've had challenge all this year dealing with one health issue or the other. Hey, hey, listen to me. Just like we prayed yesterday, I speak peace right now into that situation. Be healed in Jesus' name. Because you know, when we talk about daily bread, we're just talking about money. David said he daily loads us with benefits. Plural, benefits. And in Psalm 103, he went to explain them. He says, bless the Lord, O my soul, and do not forget all his benefits. Praise God. Now, all those benefits he listed comes in every day. Now, just in case you missed yesterday's own, you have an opportunity for today. Now, that's how loving God can be. Praise God. You know, I was sharing something. Um, last week, Thursday, in our fellowship meeting. And we were looking at the story of Balaam. Now, Balaam was a prophet of God. And a king had called him, Balak had called him, Hey, Balaam, come, there are some people that are passing by our borders. Come curse them for me. I'm afraid of them. Just come curse them for me. And Balaam said, all right, let me ask God what he thinks. And he prayed and God said, don't go. And he sent the messengers back to the king and said, sorry, I, I can't come. And the king said, what? The Bible said he sent, the king sent more honorable men to Balaam and with more gifts. And now Balaam knew God had already said, don't go. But these men came again and Balaam still said, okay, you know what? Let me pray again and hear what God would tell him. Now, eventually, God told him, go. Now, and God didn't just say go. Now, you see, <laughs> very, very amazing story. But then, what I'm pulling out from this is how loving God can be. So now, read this story yourself. It's in Numbers chapter 22. Balaam heard God say, go. And if God had just said, go, you know, sometimes we do that. So, ah, okay, go if you like. Ah, that go is not the kind of go I should take. Even if I really want to go, you are still not in agreement. But then, if the person tells you, even though he has told you no, but you're still troubling, please now, please now, please now. And the person said, go. But when you get there, call me. Now, in your mind, you will go, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You understand? As against the person just saying, hey, go if you want to go, go. That's your business. Ah, no, it's not my business. We've got to be in agreement. But then the person says, go. But when you get there, make sure you call me. Thank you. Yes. What is the difference? It's the, it is in the instruction with the go. But then, in this case, go, go read it for yourself. God told Balaam, go, but make sure 
is only what I tell you to say that you will say. He said, you pee. Thank you. And then he left. Now the Bible says when he left. <laughs> when he left. The Bible says God's anger arose because he left. God got angry with him before leaving. And but you just told him what to do. And guess what? On the way. An angel showed up and was going to kill Balaam. And his donkey saw the angel on the way. And the donkey tried to dodge the angel. Because the Bible said the angel stood with his sword drawn. Now when you see an angel with a drawn sword, (laughs) know that there is trouble. And so the donkey tried to dodge until finally he threw Balaam off. When when the donkey saw that he couldn't dodge anymore because now... There is no way. The angel was standing in a narrow path. The Bible said there was a wall on one side and then there was a wall on the other side. So the donkey knew that any forward movement, we are dead. The donkey threw Balaam off and refused to go further. And then the Bible said, and God opened the eyes of Balaam and he saw the angel. Now God was angry with him. An angel of the Lord was standing on the way to kill him, but then God still opened his eyes to see the angel. Now, God was angry, but then God still did everything to save Balaam. I say, so why did God tell him to go? And why was God telling him not to go? The reason God was telling him not to go is because God knew that there is an angel that is protecting Israel. And any attempt, even God cannot send somebody to go and do anything otherwise. The angel will kill that person. Because the angel have received a standing instruction already. And God will not change from his instruction to the angel. So when Balaam saw the angel... He fell down flat and pleaded. Say, please, I didn't know it was you. I'm sorry, sir. And I told the angel, okay, you know what? If, 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 you're, if you don't want me to go, I'm turning back right now. And then the angel said, it's okay. Thank God, God helped you. <laughs> if not, I would have killed you. He said, but pass, go. But only what I said, the same thing God said to him, is what the angel said to him. Only what I tell you, you must say. Now I'm showing you how much God puts in to save your life. I'm showing you how much God would put in to get things working for you. Believe me, when people struggle for so long, it's not because God is unaware. It's not because God doesn't care. It's because they have not sat down to understand the mind of God. So you see, David said, on a daily basis, he loads you with benefits. Question is, how many of those benefits do you receive? It's one thing for me to give you something. It's another thing for you to receive it. I can send something to you, but you don't receive it. I remember many years ago, I was praying. I didn't have any money. I had not eaten all day. And I got angry, very angry that day. Because I've been waiting for a miracle from morning till night. I didn't know anybody in the city at that time, many years ago. So when it got to night time, I will never forget. It was 9 p.m. And when I saw that the time was 9 p.m., nothing has happened. No miracle has happened. I said, what nonsense. I got so upset. I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to take a walk. I, I need to talk to God. So I stepped out of the house and I began to walk. And I said, Lord, I'll tell you the exact words I said. So I said, Lord, I don't, I don't get this. You are my shepherd. I'm not supposed to want. Are you expecting me, you that is my shepherd, that I will be begging you for food? I have not eaten all day. Now, as I was speaking all those words, I had a hush in my spirit. The Lord says, hey, go back. And tomorrow morning, go to the bank. And that's all I had. Go back home. Tomorrow morning, go to the bank. True life story. I turned around immediately. Because the way the word came, it was, I mean, just, you know. See, there's a way the Lord will speak to you. You know, he's not suggesting to you. He's commanding you. So I turned. At that very time. I felt he was angry with me because the way he said, go back home. 
I felt he was angry because of the way I spoke, you know. So I just turned, see, yes, sir. So I just turned and I go back home. Now, between the gate and the door of the house, just as I was about to open the door, I heard the engine of a car, you know, just park in front of the house. So instead of entering there, I said, let me wait a bit and just see. And then there was a knock on the gate. So I went back to the gate to check who it was. I wasn't expecting anyone. And here is this sister with a bag of, you know, in those days, Mr. Biggs. And he said, ah, my colleagues took me out after work. And as we were there, I just thought that I should buy you something. And she handed it over to me. The car was waiting, went back into the car. And then they zoomed off. I said, all right. Now, this is what we're talking about. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. Now, if I want to do the calculation, after the time I left, the time I had go back, and the time the instruction came to that lady to do what she did, it would simply mean that before I stepped out of the house, the instruction had come to her. See that now? So when I was saying all those talk and getting angry with God, God has already answered. Now, that was the one I remember the instruction was go back home tomorrow morning, go to the bank. Okay. So the following day I woke up and I knew I knew I was going to go to the bank that day. But then I was waiting for someone to call me because then we don't receive alerts on your phone like we do now. So if someone sends you money, they'll call you. I sent you this amount of money, then you go to the bank and then you check. We didn't even have cards then. And that's the how long this was. So I was waiting for a call. Was well, somebody sending me money? God said tomorrow go to the bank. So somebody definitely sent sending me money today. So I was waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting. Then about twelve o'clock, I started like, Ah Lord, uh, bank was soon close, you know. <laughs> so and then the Lord said, I didn't tell you to wait for a call. I said go to the bank. Oh oh oh. So I got to the bank and guess what I found out. I realized that someone had sent me money about a week ago and I didn't know. <laughs> I didn't know. Not even someone. I still don't know who sent that money till date. Because I asked the boss that they couldn't tell me who sent the money. So I'm like, okay. So this money came in because I waited and waited for a call. I had to go back to the bank to ask for a statement because I really wanted to know whose name, who sent this money. And nobody could interpret it. And But that money came about a week before that day I was making that request. I said, can you imagine? So God had done everything he needed to do for me. But I didn't know. And that's the problem with a lot of people. That's why we say this. When you want to pray, the first prayer point you must release from your heart is, Lord, how do I pray about this matter? Because when the wisdom of God is released to you, that's when you will know that, oh, this thing has been answered already. Oh, this thing. He will always tell you what to do. Release your heart to him. And he will always tell you what to do. Praise God. Yes. And that's what you should do today. So David said, he loads us with all those benefits. And he began to list them. And that's why he told us in Psalm 103, Bless the Lord and forget not all his benefit. He says, who forgives your iniquities? How often does he do it? Every day. Who heals you from all diseases? How often does he do this? Every day. Who redeems your life from destruction? I love that part. He redeems. He didn't say who delivers you. He said who redeems. So he actually pays to save your life. That's the meaning of redeem. To redeem something means you meet a requirement to get that thing back. So deliver can be you just go there and open eye and collect it. And you deliver that thing from his hand. But to redeem, for him to use the word redeem, is he carefully met a certain requirement to save your life. And the Bible used the word who redeems, not who redeemed. So he wasn't talking about the redemption of Jesus Christ. He's talking about the everyday redemption that God displays 
for your life to be saved. So you know what? I know I'm not going to die today. <laughs> Hallelujah. I know. I know. Why? What makes you so bold? Because he redeems my life from destruction. And I believe him. You see that now? No wonder he said when we boast, we boast in the Lord. So it doesn't just say, me, I know God is... A... No, no, no. There are specific things that God has said. He says, who fills our mouth with good things so that our youth be renewed like the eagles. So no bad thing is going to come. I'm not going to sit down and start regretting today. I'm not going to sit down and say, hey, oh, oh, what a year. No, 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 no. He fills my mouth with good things. And when I speak those good things, my youth is renewed like the eagles. This is what we receive from God every day. Every day. Oh, you wake up every morning. It's been released. Healing has been released to you. Just in case you didn't get yesterday's own, take today's own. Forgiveness has been released to you. Take it. Redemption of your life has been released to you. He has paid to keep you alive today. Take it. Oh, there are good things he's pouring into your heart. Open your heart and let your mouth speak them. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless you today for all these good things that you have released to us. All to keep us in peace. Because your mind, our mind is stayed on everything you have done. We give you praise, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Hey, have a blessed day. With what I've shared with you today, go have a wonderful day. Praise God. Bye-bye.